We're here in our chicken run with our standard flock of hens, standard meaning regular size, I guess. <laughs> we have started doing something new here in the run. We have started feeding them our kitchen scraps. Oh, hello kitties. How's it going? <laughs> so we have three flocks of chickens right now. We have our main flock of you know standard size chickens yep. kind of a mix match and then we have our flock of silkies we have our scissor beak chicken in yep. that silky flock and then we have our rooster flock which is a new addition this fall <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> if i ask you okay let's go show them the boys so it's been our goal for a while now to have a separate coop run for roosters. And they've been peacefully go coexisting as long as there are no hens. Yeah, they do really well. Absolutely. We think it's an important ethical choice that if you're going to have chickens, you're not just going to have hens because that wouldn't... There's really no way to do that it's not ethically. Very natural. Yeah, it's not natural. And so if you're going to have chickens, if you're going to hatch them out, if you're going to get them from the store, whatever it is, at some point you'll end up with roosters and on a no-kill homestead you need a spot for the roosters we have them in this premier one poultry netting and we built i built an a-frame coop for them and we've kind of just integrated them over time and we love having them they definitely know how to wake us up in the morning and they alert us if they're predators Very true. or visitors <laughs> little area and here we have our silkies and with the silkies we have our scissor beak chicken who's doing great scyther we have a video all about her that was my scent. these guys are very active right now for a while we had six or seven hens all at once who were broody and all huddling up in the coop and then we got back from homesteaders of america and the majority of them are out and about now we only have one or two that are still broody Okay, let's feed that uh, noisy one. <laughs> Over here we have our four rescued goats. Willow, Remy, Lydia, and Noel. Counting weird. And we rescued three from a local humane society a couple years back. Almost two years, two ago. years ago now. Over, over two years. Uh, and they came from a big intake case. There's actually 27 goats that all ended up at this humane society. They were actually left in a field with no food or water and no fencing and no veterinary attention or any attention at all. So they all had hoof rot. A lot of them were sick. Um, these four actually all carry this one disease that's pretty common in goats. They're really happy here. We love having them. They produce the best like mixture for our garden. Essentially we take their wasted hay, which you can see they leave a lot of, and they poop on it, they pee on it, gets all nice rich organic material. We put it right on the garden, let it sit and rot, and it turns our soil into really nice, loose, rich, healthy soil ready for planting. So they provide us with their companionship, great garden material, and we give them a safe place to live their lives. They're purely companions. No milking these guys. And a little bit over a year and a half ago, one of the three that we rescued had a baby. Her name is Noelle. She's the loudest one. She alerts us when it's time for food. And she's probably the friendliest, quirkiest one. Um, they're great. We love them. Last year at this time, Chris built them this goat shelter. Oh, this extension of the roof. We'll definitely frame it in and that'll be their nice. Because previously they were staying in this small red shelter over here and yeah. they can fit about three of them in there and we also have wait where's the other igloo what do you mean wasn't there another igloo there's two igloos oh sorry i got confused um they've got a couple igloos and the red shelter but then yeah but uh we really can only fit three in the red shelter and then somebody normally ends up going into the igloo or two go into the igloo so and have... there was no cover for their food 
correct, correct yeah. previously, yeah. So we have cover for their food now, but we also want the place where the food is to be somewhere where they can stay out of the wind and the snow. Mm -hmm. So with the uh, walls being open right now, that's not possible when the, when the wind blows, it blows snow in that area. So we're gonna frame that in. We're gonna make it a nice little enclosed area where they can be safe and warmer in the winter. Yeah, so to be continued, I guess. Um, let's show them what the barn is like right now. All right. The barn, guys. This has been our main project this year, really. Yeah, absolutely. The barn is taking all of the spring, summer, and into oh, the fall you are. to get close to completion. And we're getting close. We're Not getting quite close. There, but... A few things we've done. We have replaced the roof. Oh, there's your head. <laughs> Replace the roof. We've added solar video to come. Uh, we've centered the doorway. It used to be over here, as you can see where that new wall is. Um, we've added a dormer. That's gonna be really nice for hay access and it adds really great curb appeal. Is that what you call it when you're talking about a barn? Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> curb appeal. Um, We're gonna build new sliding doors to go right here. And there's obviously gonna be a door there as well. We're painting it. Video to come on that. What color do you think we're painting the barn? Guess down in the comments below. Uh, I've shared a couple other places, but if you know, don't guess. So once we do that, um, we're gonna be redoing the inside of the barn too. Doop, boop, doo. You can see, ooh, there's probably some raspberries actually we can pick. You can see this garden in here has been mostly cleaned out. There's just one giant ground cherry right there. We still got some Swiss chard. It's doing really well this time of year. We still have raspberries. Mm. Well, I want to focus, focus, focus. So, so sweet. Now that we're getting cold at night. Classic fall, fall foliage. We've got, I think this is ash, this is an ash tree. This uh, was the yeah. first maple tree that we tied, tried to tap. Maple. Oh yeah, <laughs> not a maple. Yeah. This is the first tree that we tied, tried to Thought tap. Thought it was a maple. Tried to tap. So right here, you can see a little spile. Start to heal up. And not a maple tree, so it didn't produce anything. But they look a lot alike in the winter, which is why we need to go mark our trees, because ash trees and maple trees can look similar. Another addition to the farm this year, oh, our gutted airstream. It's a 1969-1970 Sovereign 31-foot Airstream. Mm -hmm. Made a video, a couple videos about it, and we're gonna be turning this guy into a multi-purpose traveling home slash Airbnb. So in a couple years, if you wanna stay on a farm, you can look us up, maybe it will be available. It's completely gutted, so not much to show you inside. It's gonna be a big project over the next year or Definitely. two. Year two or three, I don't know, we'll see. We will see. Okay, so let's just take you back to the pastures so real quick. Maybe right we there. can visit with the horses, yeah. They're right in the corner. Oh. It's gorgeous today. Got a basil following us. Come on. I'm actually from Southern California, so the fall foliage to me is really not <clears throat> something i'm that used to no i've only had it for a couple years a few years now and uh you never really get used to how beautiful it is I certainly love this time of year you guys are about to go through winter you can shed some weight not really that boy justin is no he actually looks really good look at that shiny coat Hi. you always said we were the good ones Like an 18 minute thriller movie Such a love bag Such a love bag I always knew you always meant it But now we're standing Now we're standing on the best side too
Our property, for those who might not know, we are on 12 and a half acres in upstate western New York. So if you find the top of New York and you find the west of New York, you're probably pretty close to us. We have about six acres of pasture, about two and a half acres of woods, and then the rest is like front yard, side yard, some more woods. House. House. We don't know what we're gonna do with this back two acres. I don't know yet. Right now it's literally not being used for anything. We just maintain it. Maybe one day it can be a hay field, especially if we could even buy more land behind us and have like five acres of hay fields, provide all of our hay needs, that would be awesome. We have the horses in these two, three pastures. I also want to set up our property more so I can ride. We have our two horses. One is too small, one is just the right size for riding. And I love riding, I love doing it. Riding around our farm. I actually did it a lot the first year we were here but I haven't really done it in the years to follow. Want to put in a riding arena too eventually. It's gorgeous so. out here right now. Yeah, it's beautiful. Basil's following us all over. You cute, cute. Make a lap and I guess go around. I don't even know which direction I'm going in honestly. When we first moved to the farm, my dream was, she's running around. Where are you going? The dream was to have a horse and to ride. That was like kind of it. I just wanted to ride. And the first summer we lived here, that was kind of what we did. And then something happened the second summer where I decided it made sense to have a garden. And that changed kind of everything. The entire direction really of our farm and our goals for this place. And we started to care about growing our own food and the homesteading and preserving. And that's where we are now. And those are the things we're interested in now. Going into this third year was our first year where we really focused on that. And that's what took me away from having time to ride. So there's our property. Some of those woods. You can see the barn, the house, the pretty fall foliage. A basil cat. The shiny part above the barn. That is solar. Now, Having a farm has a different meaning to us than it did before. Instead of just having animals and it being just kind of this like casual hobby, it's turned into a desire to be more sustainable, more self-sufficient, healthier, and to really regenerate the land. Yeah. I don't know, it's changed a lot. It's turned into our lifestyle more than it has just been a hobby. Let's see if we have any wild grapes right now. I guess I'm gonna put these this weekend. Here. There's a tart. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my hey guys. I'm gonna be myself. Or I could be someone else. No one stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. You're so weird. See you guys later! Back here in the woods is where we tap the maple trees and go on walks. We forage for berries. We made lots of jam this year with foraged berries like black cap raspberries and red raspberries and we have blackberries and all kinds of berries. We really love our woods. I didn't even know I wanted woods. I was like totally content with just pastures when we found this place but the woods were like, I remember walking back here. Do you remember that when we saw the wild grape? Totally. <laughs> and us newbies had no idea that foraging or like wild things were Yeah, what, the, a what thing. it would all become. Like I don't even know people foraged. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, so the barn roof has been replaced. You can see all new metal roof done by this guy right here. It's me. Okay, so I want to show you guys where the garden's at. We've had a couple light frosts. 
months and so things are slowing down but guess what isn't slowing down the huga culture bed the it's culture like bed. so happy all the kale is like huge i think we have enough kale to last us all winter for sure yeah. And this will mostly survive through the winter. Some of it might die off. Yeah, so that's doing great. And then I have a lot of broccoli coming in. As you'll see, that beautiful head of broccoli there. Little head there. Got a lot of broccoli in this area. And we've got some nice, beautiful watermelon radish. So beautiful. So we've got radish, we've got lots of broccoli. These beans have mostly died. I need to pick pick the green beans off the plants. Some carrots coming in. Will be last its life on that flower. Probably froze or got too cold. The peppers are pretty much dying at this point, as you can see. I pulled almost all of them. We have a bunch of peas. So we got like peas right here. Want to eat it? delicious Ooh, look at that gorgeous amaranth yeah they're sweeter at this time of year mm. I've been most impressed this year by this beautiful hugo culture bed the thing that I thought would do worse than anything else and that's our farm in the fall until our next video winter on the farm maybe our least favorite season <laughs>